Hello, welcome to this brief tutorial on how to calculate sample size for clinical studies. I'll show you an example using two softwares. One is GPower and the other is ExcelStat. Why calculate sample size? Because you need to have enough samples in your study to draw valid statistical inferences. However, you don't want to have too many subjects in your study, more than enough, because that would be a waste of time and money and resources. What are the factors you need to know when you are calculating sample size? You need to know what's the alpha, what's the power, what's the size effect that you are anticipating and the type of statistical test that you will be doing on the data from the control and the test. P-value, particularly the alpha that you need to know, alpha is the threshold that you set as the significance level, which is usually 0 0.05. Power of a study is more complex to understand. Let's say that if I say the power of a study is 80%, what I mean by that is that if there's an actual difference between the control and the test, then this study with the power of 80% will be able to identify a statistical difference in 80% of the time. Conversely, that if there's actually a difference, then this study might not identify this the difference in 20% of the time. So you need to decide on what's the power of a study before you start it. Usually people set it to 0 0.8 or 80%. The size effect is another important factor to put into any calculations. This is what you think is going to be the benefit of a new treatment compared to the control. This is the difference that you put in. So let's say that if you are undertaking surgery for intracerebral hematoma and comparing it to conservative management, then what you want to know is what you think is going to be the effect. This usually you figure out from previous studies. The other important factor to put into any sample size calculations is what type of statistical test are you going to do on the data from the control and the test. Let's say if it's a blood pressure that you are looking at and you're looking at two medications and how they control it, then blood pressure is a continuous variable and you will be using a t-test. However, in the case of what I mentioned earlier about conservative and surgical management of a patient with intracerebral hematomas, then you are looking at the proportion of patients with good and bad outcome in each group. For that, while you use chi-squared test to look at any significant difference between the two groups, in terms of sample size calculations, you will use what's called a Z-test. So if you look at the STITCH2 trial that was run by Professor Mendelo um, from Newcastle and his colleagues and his worldwide collaborators, Prior to the study, they set the alpha as 0 0.05, the power as 0 0.08, and the sample size, the size effect as 12%, and the type of study as proportions. There are two softwares that I will demonstrate the sample size calculations. First one is G Power, it's free and sophisticated. But the disadvantage is that it's so comprehensive, it can be quite daunting for a novice. Excelstat is more user-friendly. However, it is expensive. Now let's undertake uh, a sample size calculation using, using the GPower software. So this is now that I've opened it. There are two tabs, but you want to be in the protocol of power analysis tab. Uh, we are going to use the example of st Stitch 2 
trial uh, to calculate the sample size. In the stitch 2 trial, as I mentioned earlier, they were looking at proportions, good and poor outcome uh, for each the control, the conservative and the surgically treated groups. So uh, what we want to use uh, for such um, scenarios is a Z test. And in terms of the specific statistical test that we want to use is uh, difference between two independent proportions. And the type of power analysis is a priori that um, compute the sample size given the alpha power and the effect size. You can see there are so many different options. That's what I mentioned earlier that um, G Power is a comprehensive software. However, it can be a bit daunting for novice because of all the options that's available. Now let's go to the input where we put the input parameters. Yes, we want to have it as a two-tailed test because we don't know whether the control or the test is going to have a better outcome. And in the stitch two trial, they had um, uh, estimated from uh, the literature that the good outcome from uh, conservative or medical treatment is 37%. So that's the 0.37. And they estimated that the surgical um, intervention will improve the outcome by 12%. Uh, so that will be 0.49. 12% is a quite a large improvement and uh, probably that's what is, that will be a, a significant clinical improvement. But to estimate 12% is, um, is carries, uh, is advantages and risks. As I said, if the effect size is large, then you don't need so many subjects in your study and it's easy to complete your study in one or two or three years. However, if you overestimate your effect and do the um, uh, sample size calculation, what you might find is that the effect is not exactly as high as you had thought. And now because you haven't had enough uh, numbers in your study, the p-value is greater than 0. Uh, 0 0.05 and not significant so the study becomes negative so it's a really fine balance between trying to uh, get the right effect size um, for it to be a, uh, a study that you can practically do but in the meantime it's not going to be underpowered when the results come in so the alpha as we said uh, we usually put it 0 0.05 the power is uh, 0.8 or 80 percent allocation is one to one with the randomization the plan was to allocate equal number of patients to each group and then uh, you have to also go to this option section and then click on continuity correction so you might ask what's this continuity correction it relates to the fact that um, uh, in this study we were dealing with proportions we were dealing with the discrete outcomes good outcomes versus uh, poor outcomes. Um, however, the, the statistics uses, um, uh, for it to be robust, uh, uses something called a normal distribution type uh, calculation. And usually normal distribution is uh, with the continuous variable. And this continuity correction uh, allows for this um, uh, discrete variable to be uh, looked as a continuous variable. Um, so that's why I click, click the use continuity correction. So I just want to emphasize another point here is that the purpose of uh, doctors learning medical statistics is to be versed in the language of medical statistics. So when someone, when you are reading or when someone talks, you don't feel that you are out of the loop. But when you are undertaking important studies, um, uh, like randomized control studies with a lot of um, effort and money and uh, with great implication, you will need a, a professional statistician to help you. Um, uh, it's uh, as a, for someone who might know a bit of medicine but can't do surgery, in the same way, it's good to know about medical statistics, but you will need a professional medical statistician at the end of the day. But again, it's important to be versed in the language so you know what you are dealing with. You don't feel that you are, it's beyond you. So now we click OK and now we click Calculate and um, 
uh, we get a total sample size of 566. This is what they also reported in the STITCH2 trial and for each group to have 283 subjects. So here we looked at uh, how to uh, undertake sample size calculation for a, a study that deals with proportions. It does look as though it's easy, but as I mentioned previously, um, if you are a novice and you are coming into the software with all the various uh, options that you have, it can be overwhelming. Now let's look at the outcome of the STITCH2 trial. The favorable outcome for the medical group was 38%. The favorable outcome for the surgical group was 41%. The absolute benefit with surgery was 3.7%. This is much less than that had been predicted when the original sample size calculation was made. That estimate was made expecting a benefit of 12%. The loss to follow up was 2%, 2.1% in the medical group and 2.6% in the surgical group. As for crossover, 21% of the patients who were allocated to the medical group crossed over to have surgery, whereas 2% 2 2 of the patients who were allocated to surgery did not have surgery and only medical management. The p-value uh, uh, on the statistics, uh, which they did the odds ratio, uh, was 0 0.367. This is much higher than what we consider to be statistically significant, uh, which usually is less than 0 0.05. So, what we are seeing in this results here is that there is an absolute improvement in the outcome with surgery. However, it is not statist statistically significant. This might be because it is indeed not statistically significant or that the study is underpowered. What we can do is now imagine that we are going to repeat this study um, and see what kind of population, what kind of numbers of patients we would need to have to make is a, it a well-powered study for a 3.7% um, absolute benefit. We'll do that using Excel stat. Now we are in Microsoft Excel. Excel stat is an add-in for Microsoft Excel. Uh, Excel stat works with both Windows and Mac. However, the one with the Windows has much more capability. Um, so if I click on the uh, Excel stat on the menu bar I will get the icon and if I click it then the add-in will become activated good and then if I go to this green medical insignia and then click on power analysis and then clinical trials then I get the input window for sample size stroke clinical trials module so what the goal is to find the sample size. Yes, ours is a superior rate trial. We assume that the test is better than the control. Uh, it is a binary outcome. We are looking at um, good or um, uh, bad outcome. Alpha is 0 0.05, power is 0 0.8. The success rate from the STITCH2 trial for conservative management was 38%. Um, the for surgery, it was um, uh, beneficial by 3.7%, so that's 41.7%. The crossover from medical to surgical was 21%, and the crossover from surgical to uh, medical was 2% in the last stitch trial. In the chart, if you also go and click on simulation plot, and then if you click OK, then we should so now we here see that the sample size for the power for the power of 0 0.8 alpha of 
0.05 and the control success rate of 38 percent and the uh, success rate of treatment 41.7 percent with these crossovers then the total sample that we will need to have a well-powered study will be 5489 subjects this is not taking into account the loss to follow-up that will bump the number of patients required for the study even further as you will know to try to do a study with 5489 patients will be almost impractical it will take so many years that most surgeons who start this study would have retired by then and even then if after all this study we only have a modest improvement with surgery there's no no guarantee there will be modest improvement but if there is then the question is whether the study was worth it whether the improvement is clinically meaningful so in excel stat you can actually input the crossover rates as well when you are calculating the sample size however the excel stat does not allow for correction for normality which usually jumps the numbers of patients uh, so the patient that we will need is quite high this is a graph that shows you um, as you increase the power the number of patients you will need also increases so let's say at, uh, if you are aiming for a power of 90 9.9 then you are looking at 7500 patients so in summary the sample size calculation is important when designing a study when you are calculating the sample size you have to take into account many factors these include alpha power realistic effect size whether the study is a continuous proportion or survival analysis and also take into account the loss to follow up when you decide on your sample size there are many softwares that are available to undertake sample size calculations g power is a comprehensive free software which is available to download from the web there are other paid software However, you have to be aware that the method of calculation between different software can be different. Some of them have a different equations, but some of them might have corrections for normality, etc. I hope you have found this presentation on sample size calculation useful. I hope you find this a useful platform to further research and learn and develop your expertise in this area.